Hey everyone, I'm Richard, following up today on AMD's Radeon RX 480. Now previously, when we first reviewed the card, we were looking at the 8GB version, the top-end edition that costs $240. But the headline-grabbing release is the 4GB card, costing just $200. Now the question is this, which version should you buy? And is there anything different between the two, aside from the sheer volume of VRAM available? Well, last week, AMD sent over a VBIOS for our reference board here that allows us to see just how closely the cheaper version stacks up. But first up, let's just confirm that memory size and bandwidth aside, the core specs of the RX 480 are the same between both versions. So what that means is that both versions use a six pin power input and they each feature the same set of outputs. On the reference card, that amounts to three display ports conforming to the 1.3, 1.4 HDR spec and also an HDMI 2.0B port. Now, there has been some concern about the RX 480 pulling too much juice from the motherboard. Now, to that end, AMD recently released a new driver that draws more power from the PCI Express input at the top there and less from the main board. And there were concerns uh, that this would impact performance. But in actual fact, I found that the new driver is actually very slightly faster, as you can see here in this Hitman DX12 benchmark. Yeah, I mean, well, one frame per second faster isn't gonna change the world, but the point is that AMD's fix hasn't compromised the core performance of the board at all. So here's Assassin's Creed Unity. Average frame rate there on the 8 gig model, 51.7, FPS and this drops to 50.4 on the cheaper card, 2.5% drop there. Not exactly a game changer, but significant. Similarly, the division, a 54.2 FPS readout drops to 53.6, a loss of about 1.1% in performance terms. Now, you're not really gonna be losing any sleep over that one, but some games do like memory bandwidth and the gap can open up a bit. Hitman running under DX12, 74.3 FPS on the 8 gig card, 71.4 on the 4 gig. There we've lost around 4% of the performance level and we see a similar drop on Rise of the Tomb Raider on DX12. And yes, this is the new version with async compute support. The 8 gig version there, again, 4% faster. It's not a big deal to be honest, but remember that overclocking memory is an option. If we pop into AMD's new Wattman application, just upping the overall power level and increasing memory frequency from the 4 gigs standard 1750 megahertz closer to the 8 gigs 2000 megahertz should eliminate the performance differential. Now, this is something we can't really test here, I'm afraid, as our reference card here can only emulate four gig RAM performance, and it will probably overclock much more than an actual four gig card. But based on other products with seven gigabits per second modules I've tested, you should be able to get very, very close indeed. So while out of the box performance with a four gig card may well be lower, it's not really a big deal generally, and in many cases, you should be able to overclock it back into contention with very little effort. But the next logical question is this, do you really need that extra four gigs of RAM? And that's an interesting one. Generally speaking, well, no you don't. Not for now, at least. At 1080p and even 1440p, four gigs is plenty, but really, it's all about future-proofing. So check this out, it's the new 2016 Doom and we're digging into the options menu here. At 1080p, the RX 480 runs this game like an absolute dream, but in the texture paging option, well, you can move that one step beyond Ultra with a new nightmare setting, only you can't actually activate it on the four gig card. The game won't let you because you don't have the VRAM to run it. Now on the eight gig card, we can select that option with no problem whatsoever. And if we run Ultra versus nightmare textures, side by side on the four and eight gig cards. Well, basically uh, the game performance is pretty much identical. It's just with the more expensive card, you get higher detail art with no performance penalty. Now, whether you can actually tell the difference during the run of play, well, that's another point entirely. The fact is, personally, I couldn't, but there we go. I reckon maybe you could at a higher resolution, but the RX 480 really is best suited for 1080p gaming and maybe 1440p at a push on the latest titles. So let's take a look at another example. Mirror's Edge has a hyper mode that really hammers GPU memory. Well, it used to at least. And unlike Doom, you can 
can indeed run it on a 4 gig card. Here's some head to head footage that looks pretty damning, showing the two cards running the exact same content with a huge performance differential. On the 8 gig card you're looking at a 50 FPS average compared to just 31.3 on the 4 gig product. It's 60% faster but yeah again visually there's not much of a gain going from ultra to hyper. But this is actually not the end of the story. We recaptured this during our GTX 1060 review process using the same hyper settings with GPU memory management disabled. And well it looks like the game has been patched because not only does the 4 gig card now work fine but we also see a big big boost to overall performance on both of the RX 480s. On the one hand this is great news for gamers because you're getting excellent performance on a mainstream card but on the other hand well now one of the most testing VRAM workouts we have available isn't really that much of a stress test anymore. Right so what's the takeaway here? The 8 gig 480 is a touch faster but the performance differential in itself doesn't really justify the extra cash. However, the fact is that there are games available in the here and now that do use the extra memory, even at 1080p. Now, right now, the differences aren't really worth mentioning, but I can foresee a day where perhaps they will be. And that extra $40 works out right now more as a future-proofing option for your PC gaming. And what it does mean is that the 8 gig RX 480 here is on a collision course with Nvidia's GTX 1060. Now, generally speaking, that's a bit faster, but it has just six gigs of RAM. Now, if you'd like to know more, check out our full review of the 1060 and check out those benchmarks too. But for now, I do hope that you found this useful. Do like and subscribe to support our work and I'll catch you next time.